finally it rises. Public preference for Lincoln Continental as the symbol for today's luxury motoring. Hey, hey, it's ODB, the Lincoln Addict, and I'm going to try this again with the video portion so you guys can kind of follow along and see how I'm going through this and what my thought process might be. But I want to take a look at the 63 Lincoln Continental convertible that you see here on 6.4 that recently sold uh, literally a couple of days ago. It actually had a no sale prior, so I want to talk about that. First, though, I want to just plug, if you go to lincolnaddict.com, you'll land here on my website. Uh, you can find um, ways to listen to the podcast. You can also pick up a sticker, um, one or two, and there are a few shirts left if you guys want to pick those up. You can also, um, it'll link you over to here, which is my Podbean landing page, and um, you can see all the different links. You can even scroll down and listen to these different episodes of the podcast totally for free, and basically um we're up to around episode 30 31 and i've got a new one coming very very shortly so let's jump in right here again thank you if you are a return viewer i appreciate it if you're new consider subscribing and tap on the bell notification but basically this 63 lincoln continental convertible black sold prior so back on 228 and what i want to do is scroll back down here Right here okay so this car apparently someone bid on it you don't often see this on bring a trailer but someone bid on it and maybe the financing or whatever they were dealing with it you know maybe the money just wasn't there or something but basically it uh, it sold and i thought that i did a review of this one i think it was one ironically enough that i i did a um video and I just didn't publish it because I didn't have time or whatnot. So the winning bid was 57.5 with 70 comments. And if we jump over here, we see on 6.4, ironically, on 6.4, it sold for $53,333. Kind of an odd number there with 29 comments, okay? There's a few things about this car that I want to talk about that caused some confusion and it will reinforce the importance of listing things as accurate as you can. Now, I do believe this car, based upon one of the comments from the seller, did change hands a couple of times. So I can totally understand where that's one of the X factors. Like when we had Larry on the podcast, his 62 recently sold. Larry talked about, hey, I don't have any build photos on my car, unfortunately. Those are some of the X factors that you you know, may not always, you know, be able to either produce photos or in this case, if you don't know the whole story of the car, you're sometimes just going, hey, this is what I've been told. This is what I understand. You know, those answers aren't always able to be answered, if you will. But basically with this car, I'll spend just a little bit of time talking about the car itself because it's already sold. It's not like anybody is going to be um, you know, bidding on this unless it's a no sell again, what are the chances? But you basically see here the front three quarter shot, 63, iconic with the grill. Um, we can see it is a black uh, car with a reddish interior. Uh, you, you can obviously look here at some of the imperfections and, and see like this car is not perfect. And as I've often said, typically they're always going to need something. That's what my friend TC always says. Um, I've talked to you guys a little bit about the value that I like in buying a car that's not restored, a car that isn't perfect because I'd rather have kind of an untouched car that I can get in and drive and enjoy. And then over the course of time, um, whether it's a retirement project or a father son or, you know, father daughter type project to do a restoration over the course of time. But at least if you can get in and turn the key, start the car, put the top down, put the windows down, you can start getting some immediate satisfaction from one of these cars. We can see here, and again, I'm not going to go through a super in-depth review, but basically it is an AC car. We've learned from Haggerty that that typically will add about 10% value. Um, excuse me. You also see that it has the single reservoir right here, and we can see it does have the three port because it does not have the two screws or uh, on top, if you will. So um, underneath the car... Um, you can see the gas tank is a little bit different. I haven't talked a lot about this, but in 61, 2, and 3, the setup in the rear is a little different than 64. 
and you can see right here where the gas filler it's coming right at the back um so uh that's you know that's what you're looking at there the gas tank which doesn't look too too bad it's got a couple of spots here but for a 60 year old car that is going to be um kind of the norm so to speak uh we could see here they break down the vin which i've told you guys i've always liked it's a february 1st so b is for february zero one is the day of the month so february 1st and being that this is a 63 that would have been like mid-production uh because they would have started in sep uh, august september of the previous year of 62 they would have ramped up and then this car would have come in like midway through on february 1st of 1963 it would have been basically completed or built if you will um, one thing that I've always um, talked to you guys about um, are the videos, and I got to give kudos to um, the person that had listed this. They did do a few videos, um, uh, which this one was the radio, just kind of showing some different things, the vent windows. And I'll try to click out of this. Um, they did uh, 24 seconds here showing the rear windows working, the front windows. We can see here as well. This one's only seven seconds. It's, it's showing kind of the locks there. Of course, they are vacuum locks. Uh, there's a few other engine running. Cold start. This is kind of a popular thing that's been um, transpiring a lot in videos. Someone takes like a the thermostat gun, temperature gauge, if you will, and they're able to kind of show the car has been sitting. You know, it's not warm, so to speak. That's the whole thought process there. Maybe it sat overnight or, you know, eight hours or whatever. The car is cold and it's a cold start kind of showing that, you know, it cranks right up. And then this was the kind of the money shot showing the top. The top is, of course, down. They're showing the cycle, putting the top up. It's kind of funny. I had watched this. They're kind of parked like in this little roadway here. And this person actually stops over here. It's like, wow, check that out. Um, so there are a few videos, okay? Really what I want to focus on here, and again, because this one has already sold, is just talk about a few things that if you're looking to buy a Lincoln, what you want to look for, and then a, a few things if you're ever looking to sell a car. So some people have found my channel and they said, wow, I like some of the things you talk about. I'll reinforce a few things that cause confusion with this listing. But again, when we look through the car, I, I kind of like the the paint where it kind of looks, dare I say, patina, it, it's not super shiny. Um, you know, again, we're not 100% sure what's underneath this. You know, was it ever resprayed at some point? Possibly. Uh, you just never know when you're buying any classic car. You know, is there a lot of, uh, you know, body filler, Bondo, as most well people call it. Uh, of course, that's a specific brand. But, you know, when you start to see things like this, this doesn't bother me. Um I kind of like that, you know, that originality kind of feel, if you will. Uh, when you start to look at some of the chrome and stuff, you can see, like, how nice the stuff looks here. And, you know, the rear bumpers. Um, you can see things in here that aren't going to be perfect, and that's typical for a car that, you know, hasn't been babied, if you will. You know, there's a little bit of um, imperfections in the paint. And if you don't know, black is one of the hardest colors to maintain uh, talk to anybody that you know that's a detailer or someone that, you know, possibly may, you know, just uh, be a passerby or that's detailing maybe in your neighborhood and talk to them if you're ever curious about a black Lincoln. Everyone wants a black Lincoln, but black is not an easy color to maintain. Don't know what's going on here. One of you guys can maybe chime in. It looks like the right star, but this this base is, is off and you can see it actually doesn't match up with the hole. So, I do do I do know that Tim Nill, rest in peace, he's been gone a few years. He sold me a couple of Lincoln Stars over the course of time. And I do know that in the 60s, I believe the base, this there are a couple of minor differences. And this one certainly isn't the right one. These are reproduced, and you could go to who we refer to as the usual suspects, like Lincoln Land, and more than likely buy uh, what you need there. I don't want to go through every single photo, so I'm going to kind of jump ahead here. Um, when we saw the video, like when I looked at the interior, to me the interior looks pretty nice. Uh, I've seen far worse. And uh, again, you can kind of see just the originality here. A lot of this can be cleaned up if you spend the time and get the right 
uh, products. I love Griot's Garage. Uh, we've had them on the podcast before, uh, but you can kind of see there it has the optical eye. I know that's not the correct term for it, but the Autronic eye, I believe is how you say it. But that is the automatic headlight dimmer. Pretty cool. That's where it sits uh, for these year Lincolns. The leather looks pretty good. I think this was one when I was recording before. You know, the padding and stuff up here, it's hard to tell if, if this is all original. Um, it might be, uh, to be totally honest with you. I've seen some cars that have, have you know, maintain, been maintained well over the years, but it is kind of hard to tell. Um, if if all of that is if all of that is um, original, back here uh, I like to look at these hoses. So John Cashman made a forty plus year career out of fixing the windows and fixing the tops, and I learned things from him over the years by just talking to him a few times. Of course, as well with Blair Farmer, who's here in the uh, Tampa Bay area, and you know they may you know they spend a lot of time um, going through and changing all of these lines when they're doing a full upgrade, if you will, of the top. And these earlier year Lincolns, I believe, off the top of my head, it's 61, 2, and 3, used um, like a brake fluid for the, the tops. So if I remember correctly, 61, 62, 63, when you do an upgrade and you start swapping stuff out, they suggest that you do the full upgrade. You change the rams, the cylinders, uh, the lines, uh, the pump. Uh, the solenoids, everything, because you're going to put the new Type F fluid. Um, I know there's sometimes there's going to be uh, discussion on this. We talked about it recently in one of my videos because someone chimed in on Bring a Trailer. What I can tell you is this. John Cashman, Blair Farmer, Chris Dunn, Chris's team, everybody will tell you Type F is all you want to use, okay, for your steering fluid and for your top uh, pump. Uh, especially once you do the upgrade from the old kind of uh, brake fluid type fluid uh, to the type F. But I say all that because if you look here, um, those lines have been redone. So my assumption is that all of this stuff has been redone at some point to get the top working. Uh, you will sometimes run across tops that work fine for 60 years and they'll, they'll, they'll function fine. Over the course of time, those lines are eventually going to blow out. It happened on my 64. We were bleeding the system. I thought I was going to get by with just fixing a few things. And then all of a sudden, Blair goes, hey, you, you go look under the seat, believe it or not, in the, um, you know, where the rear passengers would sit. And there was a ton of fluid. And it's because the cylinders will sometimes also blow out in the front. The seals will. And when they do, it'll drip that in my case, type F fluid all down the back there and it pulls up and puddles underneath the rear seat. Of course, you gotta dry it all out. That's fine, doesn't damage anything, but you're wasting fluid, you're making a mess. Again, this one looks like the stuff was changed and I do have a couple videos on my channel you can go back and watch on how I did my 64 um, because it's getting harder to find people to, to do that since John's retired. Underneath the car, this is how a lot of them look. They look nasty and oily. You know, this, you might kind of go, ah, oh, man, it looks disgusting. Believe it or not, it kind of coats all this stuff. So, you know, you look at it and say, yeah, you know, if you're a person that doesn't want to have any oil leaks and things like that, good luck, by the way. Uh, these cars love to leak. But, you know, you could spend the time, you could pull the engine, you could pressure wash all this. All this stuff will clean up. Um, but again, as you start peeling back the onion, uh, that's when you're going to start going further and further and further with these kind of, quote, minor or full restorations. Trust me, I know. Uh, they did do a couple of photos here underneath the car to kind of reinforce what I always tell you. You want to look. These are unibody cars. You want to look to see, is there any catastrophic rust? Are these things, you know, really nasty? You know, how bad are they? Typically, they're never going to be perfect. Um, but you just want to look underneath them and we don't get a lot of photos, but that, it is what we get there. So the meat and potatoes here, and then I'll wind it down is the confusion on this listing that caused some comments, I believe also back in February and here in May into June is you basically have this market value assessment. Okay. Look at right. What it says here, 1964 Lincoln. Okay, this is not a 64 car. It appraised at 22,500. 
and I forget if it has a date on it, which I don't know why it wouldn't be dated, but I looked before and I didn't think I saw a date. So this caused confusion because people were saying, well, hold on, you know, you've got a market value assessment. It says 64. This is not a 64 car. What's going on? I mean, to me, this this brings no value to your listing here. Okay, number one, it's showing the market value was $22,750. Now, if these cars were selling for fifteen grand, yeah, put something there that reinforces that someone appraised your car at set amount. But these cars are selling way beyond that. Okay, it's sold over two times that amount. So why would you put something that that showcasing you know what what someone appraised it at, knowing that that's like old information, if you will. Also, again, unless I'm missing it um, and I'm doing this real time, I'm not going to edit this out. Um, I don't see a date. So was this done five years ago? Was it done 10 years ago? Um, it just, it really doesn't make any sense. So it caused confusion. And um, it, it did sell, as I mentioned, for $53,333. There was questions in here. And the seller came and said, the brief conversations I had with the previous owner, his dad owned this one, but recently passed. Then the son and the brother had hard tops, but his brother is sick, so he's willing to sell them all due to not having them as much. The report is only six months old. I think the date is on it. So again, maybe I missed the date. Maybe it's small print. A convertible, you're telling me a convertible late 2022 appraised at 22000 If I was the buyer, that doesn't give me the warm and fuzzy because I'm looking at all these sales going 50000 55000 60 and, and above. If it's an appraised at 22 and a half ish, that's just something I wouldn't include. Or maybe the person has no idea what they're talking about. But again, very odd. Um, you can kind of see what I'm saying there. It's just one thing that you just simply leave out. You just don't include that. Um, not that you're hiding anything. But again, it's not dated as far as it's not clearly dated. Um, and it's just. I mean, who did it? Uh, I, I don't I don't know. I, these cars are appraising for more than that. And I've showed you guys through Haggerty. So enough with that. Um, someone said, you know, this th that answer was um, because this person was like, hey, can you tell us a little bit about it? You know, sometimes when a person like this gets the car, I'm not saying I know this person, I don't know the story, but, you know, it could just be a flipper. You know, it could be, unfortunately, a guy dies his son gets it, whatever that story is, whether that's accurate or not, then they decide, hey, we want to liquidate it, get 50, 55, 60, whatever thousand out of it. Boom, they put it up. You have to be, you know, careful sometimes when someone says, hey, the brief conversation I had, you know, such and such. You got to take all that with a grain of salt because, you know, it's, it could be made up. You just, you just never know. Um, I actually didn't recognize the VIN discrepancy on the report. I do know that the previous seller had a few of them, but in different colors. So again, that could explain it. I did replace the hood emblem with the factory one. Again, we saw something's a little weird there. Here's a copy of the report. So he does put a Dropbox link. My only feedback, this one obviously indicates, um, I think bring a trailer will go and mark them as the seller, which is great. But public service announcement, be careful of any links that you're clicking. There's a lot of phishing scams and all that. Not saying this is one, but, you know, certainly if just a random guy comes in here and says, hey, here's a link to more photos, and the link looks weird, don't click it, right? Um, so this, people get off tangent in here talking about the JFK assassination or something with uh, Oswald. Um, talk, uh, all the talk of cost of interior restoration and paint to me, it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. There, there's always going to be different guys that come in here and they're just kind of chatty and, you know, they're saying good luck with the sale and things like that. He talks about down here, all fluids were flushed and replaced. Um, the drums were changed. So there was a little bit of maintenance. So that kind of gives you a little bit of, you know, good feeling that, Hey, the person spent a little bit of money you know, and things like that. They're out driving the car around. Obviously, they drove it in their neighborhood somewhere to do the video um, to put the top up. Um, by the way, if you don't know, this is good luck um, with the auction. It's typically G-L-W-T-A, if you didn't know that. 
So there you have it. Um, I do want to just let you guys know, I did receive an email right before I started recording this. And I want to say, boom, there it goes. It wasn't, I kept refreshing right before I started this. I'm going to do this review here shortly. I just literally probably 20 minutes ago when I started this video, um, on my Apple watch, I saw that, uh, it says a 64 Lincoln continental convertible is up for sale. So this is going to be a fun one to go through. Uh, believe me, 64 black factory for the most part, what it looks like black interior, triple black is what they call it. Black interior, black paint and black top. So triple, triple black. So I'll go over that one next. Again, it ends in seven days. Um, full disclaimer, uh, this is for entertainment only. I've told a few people in the comments that want to kind of, you know, go back and forth on things. I'm always willing to look at your comments and I try to respond to all of them. Uh, but certainly, you know, keep it, keep it polite. If it's something you don't like, um, just move along. If there's something that you think that I missed, I'm fine with taking that feedback. So please comment and say, Hey, you know, at such and such point, you know, don't, you know, there was this or that. Dude, I love that feedback. So, so um, two thumbs up there if you can do uh, do me a solid and give me any feedback. Um, most importantly, subscribe and turn on the bell notification. Check out Lincoln Attic Podcast. I think that's it. 64 Lincoln Continental coming up soon. And, of course, the 63 that just sold. Hopefully, the person will pay. And this one will be down the road and we'll be on to the next one. Stay on the rise, everyone. Thank you for the support. ODB, we out of here. Peace.